Hello, uh, my name is uh, Alexander Antipov. I'm the director of the uh, Corrective Jaw Surgery Center here in Roseville, California. And uh, treating uh, jaw surgery patients is my true passion. And uh, that's what we specialize in. We handcraft every case, uh, uh, plan it uh, meticulously, and uh, get a definitive result for our patients. Uh, so goals of treatment for the orthognathic surgery. And orthognathic surgery is to is, is the goal is to make the jaw straight, that's where it comes. Ortho, gnathe is the jaw, ortho, straight jaw, uh, uh, for the lack of a better term. Uh, so the goals of the treatment for the jaw surgery, is, uh, stability, facial balance, uh, stable occlusion, gum health, uh, team J health is very important, improved airway, and patient satisfaction. Um, can you see well? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Um, so everything starts, uh, uh, I mean, most of the time, it's uh, orthodontic consultation. That's where it starts from. Orthodontist initiates uh, uh, a referral of some sort uh, or concern about that the patient may need a jaw surgery. Uh, it could be uh, in the general dentist office if you're doing uh, Invisalign on your own, uh, then uh, that could be the case. Uh, but typically, uh, somehow patients get to the uh, oral surgeon and uh, we do the consultation for them. Uh, and it's about an hour, uh, hour and a half consultation. Uh, in, in my office, I usually do them at the end of the day, so I have nobody else scheduled. We just spend a lot of time with the patient uh, talking. Uh, there are a lot of things happening during that consultation. We'll talk about it in a second. Then, uh, then we follow with the orthodontics, probably six to 18 months, uh, approximately. And then uh, we do a surgical workup, uh, approximately one month prior to the surgery. And then uh, there's a surgery, recovery, and post-surgical orthodontics, anywhere six to a certain amount of months as needed, uh, but typically around six months. And then retention, lifetime retention. A variety of deformity from uh, uh, dental hygiene schools and uh, dental assistant schools, we all know angle classification, class one, supposed to be ideal profile, which is actually not true. We'll find out that uh, in a little bit. Uh, Open bite, apertognathy is the scientific term for that. A deep bite, uh, uh, high angle, low angle, that's the mandible angle if it's open this way, high angle if it's low angle, deep bite usually. Uh, facial asymmetry cases are the most uh, difficult to treat because then we're treating in two planes. Usually our uh, asymmetric cases uh, is two plane, uh, two plane uh, uh, planning. Uh, long face, uh, short face, uh, long face is uh, usually a little uh, easier to treat than the short face, and uh, some people have bimaxillary protrusion. Uh, again, class one, class two, class three airway. Uh, orthodontic preparation for orthodontic surgery, uh, huge. So we will discuss extraction, non-extraction cases. Uh, first or second, uh, pre-mole extraction is um, easy. Sometimes people, uh, you know, patient is scared of uh, uh, jaw surgery at all, or it's not even an option, even if they have a slight deformity, they have declined profile, but they just want to bite. And, uh, you know, premolars are extracted, and uh, uh, that helps uh, orthodontists to align uh, the arches. Uh, mandibular incisor sometimes has to be extracted at the second most common tooth, uh, am I right, Dr. Nolan? Yeah, mandibular incisor. And then uh, we do uh, third mole extractions as well uh, for those patients. Uh, uh, for non-extraction cases, which uh, are becoming more popular uh, now because uh, it gives you a full set of teeth, uh, palatal expansion, uh, which is called SARP, which we surgically expand the palate uh, with the teeth uh, without doing a major, major operation. So it's, a, I would say, not a fourth one, which is a major, but something in between. Then mandibular expansion uh, sometimes can, uh, needs to happen, and that can be uh, big surgery or less aggressive surgery with distractors, uh, and then a distalization of the molar teeth with the tetraboloid plates, uh, interproximal stage. So this is a lot of uh, text here, so I, uh, I'm gonna kind of uh, skip through that. You know, first uh, surgical consultation. So when the patient comes to this office, what do we really do on the first appointment? Uh, um, it's a medical history, dental orthodontic history. We do the comb beam CT scan, dental models, pictures, we uh, do an exam, uh, facial, intraoral, team J, 2D lateral uh, cephalogram, uh, which we extract from the um, CT scan, which which called a true cell. It's a really true cephalometric uh, um, measurement. 
and then uh, we, we establish diagnosis, treatment options, uh, presentation to the patient, uh, and recommendations to the insurance company and to orthodontist uh, how to proceed. Um, then there's intermediate surgical consultation, uh, just involves diagnostic casts, usually every six months as the patient goes through the ortho treatment, we just take impressions, see if they're ready. Um, and then the final surgical consultation workup where we do you know, very advanced facial analysis, laser uh, face marking, uh, establish the head position uh, more accurately, facial photography, 2D, 3D uh, planning, and uh, splint production uh, for the actual surgery. Uh, we're gonna talk about natural head position in, the, in, the, in a little bit. So uh, in the lateral plane, we, uh, we uh, plan class one, class two, class three malocclusions, uh, and uh, uh, facial asymmetry is uh, in the frontal plane. So two, two frontal plane planning for symmetries and lateral for the uh, just regular deformities. So the main question is, uh, does the medical insurance cover orthodontic surgery? And because I, I often hear it, you know, oh, you know, they wouldn't do it because medical insurance doesn't cover it. Yes, and most of the time it does, I would say 95, 90% of the time, it gets denied quite a bit. We have to do peer-to-peer -peer reviews with the uh, uh, medical directors. Uh, if, uh, let's say, it doesn't, then just change the care and uh, other medical insurance will cover it. It's as simple as this. It might take another six months to get the benefits, but medical insurance has to cover uh, this surgery, and we work hard to get it covered. All those cases you'll see, it's a regular people uh, who uh, had an orthodontist, had regular medical insurance, and uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's all got covered. So the first patient we're going to talk about, case one, is uh, uh, the female uh, of uh, 24 years old, uh, and she has a very close to class one bite. Uh, she has a little bit of dislocation that means her lower jaw is back. Uh, she has a facial decline. Uh, and uh, when she smiles, uh, she shows an of teeth, uh, but you can see here she has a retrusive chin. Uh, uh, and uh, not a whole lot of asymmetry. Her midlines are uh, relatively leveled. When, when we look at her um, facial profile, it is important to put the head consistently in the natural head position. And uh, uh, one of the ways to do it is a equilibrate uh, uh, the head position by uh, doing certain movements and then you, you have to look straight, not up, not down, uh, just straight and uh, just like you're looking at the horizon and you don't want to have a can to the hand. Um, sometimes we have to adjust the uh, head position for certain uh, asymmetries. Uh, we like uh, quarter views for cheek profile, smile views, and then we produce the CT scan with the airway. So now, before we used to just have a lateral set, now we have the capabilities to do 3D scans. And uh, this scan was uh, taken uh, uh, in, the scan, uh, in the scanner and the patient was uh, looking up. So it definitely has to be adjusted to the natural head position. So you, you see how much discrepancy we have? We have to rotate that image to plan correctly. So this is before and after surgery. You can see the soft tissue profile changes, double jaw surgery. Uh, we have upper Lefort one osteotomy. Uh, we have lower bilateral sagittal split osteotomy. We have chin advancement uh, via uh, genioplasty advancement and down grafting. And we have uh, probably about six degrees of the occlusal plane rotation. So uh, the key to get this chin out, you can't just bring it out and you cannot do too much of advancement. So on, uh, usually we like to do about two to four millimeters of the osteotomy uh, on the chin. Um, and sometimes we have to do more, but it's better to do less to have a nice lateral mental fold, uh, which you can see, this is the rested position here uh, for a patient. So uh, the profile drapes around the bone uh, nicely. And uh, you can see the increase in airway. And the pogonium came forward 25 millimeters in, in, for this patient. So this is the occlusion after the surgery. So we kept the midline straight. This is the profile change. Three quarter views. Um, a lot of patients, they look for uh, cosmetic result as well. And they would like us to enhance their cheeks. Uh, a lot of women like big cheeks and uh, that's what we do. So this patient got cheek implants. 
Uh, we did a revised nasal base uh, for uh, better nose nasal projection, and uh, we did the uh, lip uh, reconstruction. So again, this is her. Uh, this is her preoperative mouth opening. So, um, so I showed you the final result. Now we're going to talk about uh, the problem that this, this patient had. She had she had very close to class one, but she had severe TMJ uh, problem. So she couldn't uh, open. She uh, she had uh, uh, severely resorbed condyles. They were like a drumstick. If we look at the TMJ uh, health, so those patients, especially females, I mean only females. Uh, I get that problem. It's called estrogen uh, associated uh, condyle resorption, uh, idiopathic condyle resorption. We do get estrogen levels for those patients. Uh, and uh, you can get uh, a patient with a full mouth veneer reconstruction that will get a, a facial decline like at 17 or 18 uh, years of age. And you have to look for this. So if you see somebody who is retrognathic and they want to improve their appearance, their uh, full mouth re re restoration, or orthodontic treatment, you have to catch it early. Uh, simple tomograms like this will show a lot. And uh, uh, what is the definition of condylar remodeling? Uh, functional remodeling in class one by this maintain. So th that's what I've maintained. This is what this patient is. Or dysfunctional remodeling when it results in class two bite. That means the patient slipped. And I will show you that uh, in the a few cases after, there's a patient who had class one perfectly done by uh, distinguished orthodontist, uh, and uh, she slipped, and uh, she slipped when she was 17 into severe class two malocclusion open bite, and part of that probably was her estrogen. Uh, so dysfunctional remodeling, uh, also uh, uh, synonymous with uh, idiopathic female condylar resorption. That means that etiology is unknown. Uh, but hypothesis that estrogen is the, the, is the problem, receptors estrogen, and then resorbs um, and the condyle. Idiopathic condyle resorption, progressive condyle resorption of vascular necrosis. TMJ protocol uh, for us here, uh, and, and this is just a small number of things we do preoperatively, but we start a year to six months. Uh, we uh, medicate those patients, we medicate condyles uh, with uh, uh, simvastatin, omega-3, doxycycline, Sometimes we put them on anti-inflammatory feldin, uh, vitamin E, C, and uh, anticonvulsants, amitriptyline, and sometimes in permanent soft diet. They do get splint therapy of some sort and uh, Botox injections. So again, let's look at the uh, patient profile uh, with the 3D. Uh, so we use the titanium plates and screws, and with a big advancement like this, we double plate, because this is from here to here, it's osteotomy gap, it's very big. It's probably 12 millimeters. But if you get 12 millimeters here, it doesn't mean your pogonium, which this point right there, can you see the mouse when I do this, yeah? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is pogonium, this is the most anterior point of your chin. This one actually came uh, on this patient probably about 27 millimeters, so more than an inch forward. Uh, so how can you get that inch? You can't do it by just sliding jaws like this. You have to change a occlusal plane, you have to rotate the face this way and get the chin uh, by uh, counterclockwise occlusal rotation of both jaws, and that will keep that chin forward. Uh, so that that's history, but I have to show this. This is the face ball, so you can realize how bad that uh, retrognat is because patient is in the splint, and that's where the joints are seated now, and she has a face ball. So she has a face ball, and she stands in front of the door. Uh, so I'm looking for the uh, vertical lane, and I have a grid in my hand, and I'm looking uh, to make sure her true vertical plane of her face, which is a, a vibration TVL, true vertical line, uh, which is which is run from subnasale, and uh, you can see that uh, line right there. I run it through the um, nasal base right here, and uh, I want it to be probably uh, about four millimeters in front of glabella, and then this is our true head position right there and I put that articulator bar parallel to this uh, string right there so I have a grid in my hand and I'm standing and then the picture is uh, taken from behind uh, so we're gonna take a look at the uh, occlusal cans uh, as well and uh, there's another picture there so you can see there's my hand right there there's my finger holding that grid and I'm just checking for uh, uh, face this way so again 
This is her uh, preoperative profile. This is surgical planning on the dolphin imaging software. So that's how we planned. Uh, and that's what we got. So uh, pretty much we can get uh, very accurately right now because everything is handcrafted. Every case is handcrafted. Uh, and uh, now it's even more accurate and predictable than 3D planning. So this is still 2D. I had to cut the models, I had to articulate them. We don't do this anymore. I'll show you how we do it now. Uh, it's all 3D, just like you take digital impressions for, uh, you know, instead of uh, impression materials on, in selected cases, uh, we do that uh, with the 3D planning. Uh, and uh, that's her uh, uh, third week after surgery. And those patients with those very funny team J's that are drumsticks, uh, you have to uh, establish the team J protocol early. What does it mean? You have to mobilize them. You need to make sure there's a hydraulic pressure in the joint, bringing oxygen, and it's healing. They are on, uh, they always on tetracycline. They always Botox uh, uh, heavily in, in the masseters and temporalis because we don't want any uh, parafunctions of the masseter. Uh, and uh, uh, they always have a class two elastics of four ounces, and they always have uh, scale of fixation. So what helps now, uh, let's go back to this uh, 3D picture. You see those screws sticking out of the jaws right there? Those are TEDs, it's temporary anchorage devices. Uh, and so we put uh, elastics on those TEDs instead of putting them on the um, braces. So that makes the, uh, the facial traction and uh, you know there are lots of nuances, and these are probably the most important: is early mobilization, medication, uh, soft diet, uh, and uh, uh, skeletal suspension. So it's uh, like belts and suspenders. So again, this is three weeks after surgery. We can see profile improvement. Uh, this is the bite uh, after braces are removed. Uh, this is the uh, face before and after. So we can see the. Uh, Chin point came probably right about there because those uh, images are consistent. So for her forehead, uh, her uh, inclination of her face is exactly the same, and you have to adjust it. So now we use uh, when we scan, we put facial markers on. So when we scan, uh, put the image on the uh, uh, on the cephalogram tracing for 2D in a 3D planning. Uh, everything is uh, uh, in the natural head position. So this is important. So uh, obviously the patient improved the facial balance. You can look at the airway. So uh, upper jaw forward, uh, approximately uh, five millimeters. Lower jaw forward, perfect occlusion, and a lot of counterclockwise rotation of the face. A lot of counterclockwise rotation of the face.